I call myself a human electrician. I work to change the old wirings in human and create new circuits of happiness, abundance, and achievement. As a child, I was extremely fearful, a complete introvert. I hid when we had guests over. I was unable to trust or share my feelings with anyone. As I grew up, I attracted people who came into my life and left because I was wired with the belief that I can't trust anyone and it's safe for me to be alone. This went on for years. The cycle of escapism ruled my life with an iron fist until I stumbled upon theta healing and realized my fears were sabotaging my career and crippling me from moving ahead in my life. On the first day of my Theta Healing class, my teacher told me, you should become a healer. And I thought, no way, I can't do that. I can't talk to people. Forget sh sharing stories with each other. Now, five years later, I professionally sit across people who are able to pour their heart out, are able to share their stories with me. I'm able to listen, gain their trust, and help them rewire themselves. I'm a Theta Healing practitioner and instructor, and this technique has been instrumental in helping me shape my life. Let me explain this with a life example. One day a person came to me and asked, why do I have to struggle to achieve the smallest things in my life? Why do I have to work hard to succeed when there are so many people out there who make it big so easily, who are successful without any hard work? Well, this is how he perceives his life, which is how the person is wired. Just as we have unique fingerprints, we have our own internal wiring. Now, what contributed to his internal wiring? As he was growing up, his father repeatedly told him, son, you have to work hard to be successful. This is his learning. He worked hard his entire growing up years to achieve success. That is his experience. The repeated experience of his learning became his pattern in his subconscious mind without he realizing it. It begins to govern his life by him attracting situations and circumstances that solidify this belief pattern. This then settles in the subconscious mind, which we are controlled by 90% of the time. The thing about the subconscious mind is that, paradoxically, you control it as much as it controls you. Let me explain this with an example. I want you all to begin to shake a leg for the next 10 seconds or so. Start. Now that I've asked you to begin shaking your leg, you're consciously doing this. You're doing what I've asked you to do. You're operating with your conscious mind, but you're fully under your control. You chose to begin shaking your leg. You chose to listen to me in the first place. But now, 10 seconds later or so, many of you, are still shaking your leg. This shaking your leg has almost become a mini pattern in your system. Despite the fact that your conscious mind started it, it was the subconscious mind that continued to do so. So, can we change his internal wiring? Can we reprogram his subconscious mind? Yes, of course we can. We use a very interesting method called digging, where we investigate the person to understand what has shaped his beliefs and bring him to the awareness of the belief that he's operating with. That is, I need to work hard to achieve success. Once we identify the core of the problem, we release the old and integrate the new belief of I know how to achieve easily. I know how to be successful 
without hard work. This is his new learning. Is it that simple? Let me explain a little further. We are all made up of tiny subatomic particles which form the energy and matter we see around us. We can modulate and use this energy to accomplish what we want in our lives. In theta healing, we work with the theta brainwave, a semi-conscious state where the subconscious is highly active, and so it becomes easy to reprogram it. Now, we've instilled the new belief, the new learning. Is the process over? No. What is the next most important step to program this in the subconscious mind? His experience. This learning now has to be applied to his day-to-day -day experiences. He may start attracting situations and circumstances due to his rewired programs and thoughts. But he'll often fall back to a place of comfort, such as he might take up a task which requires him to struggle or work hard because the subconscious mind attracts situations that it's comfortable with. The real challenge is when he must make a choice to either fall back in his comfort zone or to have the courage to change his pattern. When he chooses to avoid struggle and hard work to achieve success is when he puts his learning into experience. This is his new experience. So instilling beliefs is simply rewiring your subconscious mind by replacing the old patterns and continuously embedding the new learnings into practice. Next time you face a situation, instead of asking yourself, why is this happening to you? Ask yourself, why have I attracted this situation? What are the beliefs that have caused this? How is it serving me? We are getting wired each moment of our life and are responsible for wiring our children and others around us through our thoughts and actions. Now I'm going to give you two statements. Take a moment and think deeply. Which one do we focus on even slightly more when teaching our children? Is it learning to value money or is it learning to value relationships? If it's the first, then why are we surprised when our children grow up and get involved in financial family disputes? They are just following the wiring we help them create for themselves. So the onus lies on us, on what we pass on. Until we don't make the unconscious conscious, it will direct our lives. It's all about contributing to positive focused thoughts to build a strong foundation for a more self-connected future. Thank you.